Hey everybody. So uh, today I want to come to you with a random thought. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I don't start with that as a lead-in because it is the title of the YouTube channel. Whatever. Not the point. So this morning I was standing outside. Uh, I've got a little porch and so I like to watch the birds. We've got a lot of trees in the area and uh, early in the morning they, you know, they're, they're pretty active. And so it's a lot of fun to watch them because, you know, you can kind of see their behavior and all that stuff. So there's a flock because they are always seem to be across the street. There's a flock that live in, a tr in the uh, tree across the street. And so what they did this morning is they landed over across the street, lifted up, and then they flew towards the house next door because they have a nice little ornamental patch out front, which has a lot of different grasses and stuff in it. And a lot of it is seeding. So, you know, I'm sure this is like mm, jackpot, you know, a worm farm, you know, they, they just, you can't beat that kind of a food source when you're, you know, all your day is spent looking for food. So they're headed over that direction, but I see them land right in the middle of the road. And I'm like, okay, uh, birds don't land in the middle of the road because I know there's no seed there. I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's concrete and grease. So I see them stop and they're all facing one direction. So I'm like, oh, God, this is good. There's something over there. I can't see what's, I can't see it because it's basically, it's a patch of like, you know, tall ornamental grasses. And I see a little bit of movement and then all of a sudden this, there's 40, probably 50 birds. I'm not exaggerating. These are relatively small birds and you could not see the road. Uh, you wouldn't want your car underneath of them, put it to you that way. So they stopped in the middle of the road. They're watching this. What I find out later is the neighbor's cat. And all of them are sitting there and then something happens. The cat moves. At that point, I see it. And all of a sudden, all of those birds just bounce. They're like, we're out. And they Bing, everybody is off into the safety of the tree, which is across the road, except for two birds. It's a male and female, obviously a male and female. Same breed, one's ornamental, one's, you know, uh, pretty plain, uh, which is I always thinks kind of weird because throughout the animal kingdom, uh, the females don't have to do any work to attract a male. They just have to be a female. And for somehow in humanity, we've decided it's the other way around. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. Not the point. So I'm watching this and it looks like a paired couple because they are literally standing. Uh, these birds are probably, I would, these are small birds and they are less than the length of their body away from each other. And they're both standing there. And at first, they're focused. Now everybody else is gone. They stay in the street watching this cat. So the cat stands there, looks at him, and he comes out fully on the sidewalk. He is in pounce position. And so I watch this too. And then I watch something odd. It is the two of them initially were just watching the cat. But then one of them actually turned 45 degrees and both of them started doing just the oddest thing. They didn't stare at the cat. They started looking in all directions. And I stood there for a second. I'm like, okay, now this makes no sense because the dude that can eat you is right flipping there. You should be watching him. That's not what they were doing. They were watching everything. And they were watching each other's back. They were both, they, they, they were in separate positions. They, they obviously weren't looking out for themselves or they both would have been standing in the same direction looking at the cat because that's how nature works. You know, you got a predator in front of you. You don't go, oh, hey, I wonder what's back there. Let's check that out. That seems interesting. <laughs> you know, you, know you, you look at the dude that's pointing the gun at you. Yeah, that's just how it works. So I saw that and they were going to wait him out. They were going to wait the cat out and they did. And they stood there <laughs> in the road. Thank goodness there was no traffic going by or I wouldn't have any story. But they stood there in the road until the cat who knew it did not have cover anymore 
and really was too far away to have any snowballs chance in Hades of making contact with these little birds because they are gone in a second. And I think he knew that. And he got bored and gave up. Okay? But there's more to the story. I would have thought that the rest of the birds, as soon as the cat had, you know, moved on down the road, uh, would have came back. And they didn't. Those two birds went over. And there's, it's an ornamental flower bed. And there's a lot of the tall grasses that are seeding. And so th it is like, that's a buffet for a freaking bird. Now, let me tell you, that's like no work. It's literally on top of the ground. You can eat as much as you want. And uh, the, like I said, I believe these two were a matched pair. And so in my head, and of course, you know, because I'm, you know, a girly man. I don't want to, I'm just, I'm sensitive. I'm looking at that and I am getting a life lesson because, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, I watch cartoons and, you know, I, I, I base foundation, uh, change the foundation of my life on it. Not really, but not too far off. So sometimes you, things make you reevaluate. And so I'm looking out there and I'm, you know, I don't know, everything's parable, I guess, in my head. I'm looking at these two birds and I'm like, wow, what an example. So here you have uh, a couple. It could be two friends. It could be, you know, significant others. It could be whatever, but you have two and but you're part of a bigger group but in this part of this bigger group you're still you're still one unit and so you're in a situation where you know their eyesight is phenomenal they would be able to they would clearly be able to see those seeds from 50 or 60 feet away they see the prize before them but unlike everyone else around them they stick together they're cautious, but they face the danger together and they got the reward. They didn't have to share that with anyone. You know, if you, with the number of birds that were landing, those seeds would have been gone in seconds. You know, when you're dealing with 40 or 50 birds, uh, you know, a, a, a hundred pieces, a hundred seeds, <laughs> this is gonna not gonna last any period of time whatsoever. If you've ever watched a chicken eat, uh, when they say you eat like a bird, you don't understand how much a bird eats. But the point being is I watched those two and because they were together, because they had the same goal in mind, they both knew what they were going for. And I believe this is a match pair because it's male and female, clearly. And that they have babies at home to take care of. And of course, you know, I always relate that. I'm immediately going to connect that to a, the family unit. And, and I'm looking at that, and that is, a, that's the strong family. That's a strong family unit, is when you have both people who are watching each other's back and are willing to face danger, even if no one else agrees, even if everyone else is going the other way, you see something that you know you're able to accomplish you do it together, watching each other's back, and you get to win the prize. To me, that is the, the ultimate relationship. That, that is the ultimate picture of what a, a relationship should be with someone because you, there's, it eliminates something that is core in humanity, and that is fear. That is something that we're, especially right now in this country, that, that many people deal with every single day. I, I watch someone who, I understand she actually may have had a reason, okay, because I have a family member who, who literally in exposure to this virus whatsoever would be the end of his poor little life in a very short period of time. So I understand that there are situations where this is necessary. But the look on her face, the, the, the steps that she was taking to protect herself were, um, were excessive. Uh, you know, there's some things that you're, you're not helping. What, what, what you're doing, there are things you can do to help, but, but just do those. Stick with the things that actually help and, and don't, because the look on her face and the fear on her face was clear that she, that this is a, um, uh, this occupies a lot of her mind. And 
we don't function well when we're afraid. You know, that's not, you, you, there's, uh, there's a difference between a heightened sense of awareness and being afraid. Fear is crippling. Fear makes you do things that don't make sense because the fear has so overwhelmed you that you will accept anything that is said to you because it protects you. It makes you safe. And we have to evaluate what we are doing in all of life. This has nothing to do with what's going on right now, even though it is ironically appropriate. But throughout our life, if we are going to win the prize, if we are going to be successful in ways that other people aren't willing to be, if you want the relationship, whether it's with a significant other, which your best whatever, you're going to have to watch each other's back. You're going to have to be willing to together take risks. That's what creates those bonds. I, 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 I'm a hopeless romantic. Uh, I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe, apparently in error, I believe that what they write songs about is possible. Isn't that stupid? It's totally ignorant. But I believe it's possible. Because as a musician and a person who writes, uh, I want to make that happen. I'm not talking about a fantasy. I'm talking about something I want to experience. So, so I believe those things are possible. Uh, it must just be me, uh, apparently. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm a terrible person to be around. So <laughs> do not feel sorry for me, okay? Pl trust me, do not feel sorry for me. I, I should be by myself. Because um, you would have to listen to this all the time. Could you imagine that? Could you flip and imagine, like, you know, sitting down on the couch? And this is like my everyday. One of the things about that I wanted to make a change, which is why I decided to, I'm, you know, after this video, I'm going to be investing in equipment, um, is because it, this is just who I am. And, uh, you know, and when I think of something, when I see something like that, you know, it makes me, uh, it gives me hope for humanity. Because, in nature, we can see the example in nature of how this works. And so how can we not say that it would be possible for us who we're the, we're the top of the food chain, we're the highest life form sometimes. So why can't that be possible with us? In, in any situation, what, what, if starting a business, starting a relationship, buying a house, building a house, uh, uh, stepping out of your comfort zone. The, the thing about the birds that got me was that it's the herd mentality. Is the herd mentality might get you run off a cliff. Yes, there is protection to a certain degree in the herd, but there becomes there comes a certain time when you and your partner see an opportunity and are willing to take the risk, you get the reward. You're the one because you're willing to do something that other people weren't willing to do. And it's something that I heard when I was you know, in a lot of sales and all that stuff is, uh, if you're willing to do the things that other people are not willing to do, you will be able to live a lifestyle that they are not able to live. Now, their primary focus on that was money, okay? Uh, that's not my focus, okay? You know, have money does not bring happiness. Happiness brings happiness. And then money makes things easier. And then, you know, certain things make things easier, but happiness begets happiness, okay? Money doesn't, uh, uh, crap doesn't, that stuff doesn't beget happiness. If that does for you, you're pretty freaking shallow. Oops, sorry. Um, I'm trying to cut back on like the, the bad words and the semi-bad words. Um, it's not working real well, sorry. Not really. Uh, all right, so have your partner's back. The person that supports you, if that's your best friend, if that's, uh, hopefully, if that's your significant other, have their back, watch their back. You may not necessarily understand what they're doing or why they're doing it, but you need to be able to trust that person. You need to be able to trust in that person's ability to also have your best interests at heart. Both of those animals were looking out for each other. She wasn't looking out for him. He wasn't looking out for her. They were looking out for each other.
because they had a mutual shared goal, which is to get food back to their babies. And so I just thought it was a great freaking lesson. And of course, then it tied into a bunch of other stuff because I get over caffeinated and decide to get in front of a camera, which just makes my mouth run. So new equipment coming. I'm sure you'll be glad. New mic. This will almost look like I know what I'm doing. So, which since I don't, I need that. Uh, it's important to have a proper image. You know, you know what a professional is? A professional is a stranger in your town with a briefcase. That's a professional. Because you don't know who he is. He could be freaking anybody. But if he's dressed the part, he's a professional. Uh, you know, the Bible actually says a, a, a prophet or a teacher uh, will, will not have any honor. He won't have, have any respect, basically, uh, in his hometown. That if you're going to, it, you people who know you don't care what you know. And it's, I don't know what the deal is with that, but it's okay. Because I still love them. And, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to agree with me to be my friends. Because if you did, I would have no friends. So, all right. Love you guys. Thanks for stopping in. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.